Hello, my name is Mike. I'm an elder at Cornerstone Church in Bristol. We're an authentic Christian community who love the Lord Jesus Christ and we want him to be known throughout Bristol, throughout Britain and beyond. This morning I'm going to start to talk to you about Joseph. There are so many things in the life of Joseph that affect our lives today and the way that we think and the way that we live. He's a pattern for us in so many ways. The problem is we tend to think of Joseph as someone who has that multicoloured coat, a dreamer. And we just leave it at that. And yet there is so much more below the surface to this story. And so this morning I would like to start with the first part of Joseph's life and then on another occasion we will move on to different stages of his life. But first I want to speak to you from, uh, read to you from Genesis chapter 37. Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is the story of Jacob. Joseph, being seven years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wife. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also he made him a tunic of many colours, but when the brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. So he said to them, please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There we were binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And indeed your sheaves stood all round and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he still dreamed still another dream and told his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream. This time the sun, the moon and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told his father and his brothers and his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream that you've dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed bow down to, to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him. But his father kept the matter in mind. Then the brothers went to feed their flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. And so he, so he said to him, Here I am. Then he said to him, Please go and see if all is well with your brothers and well with the flocks and bring back a word to me. So he sent him out to the valley of Hebron. And he went to Shechem. Now a certain man found him, and there he was, wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What are you seeking? So he said, I'm seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are feeding their flocks. And the man said, They've departed from here, for I heard them say, Let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. Now when they saw him afar off, even before they came near him, they conspired to, against him to kill him. They said to one another, Look, the dreamer is coming. Come therefore, let us now kill him, and cast him into some pit, and we shall say some wild beast has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of the hands, and said, Let's not kill him. And Reuben said, Shed no blood, 
but cast him into the pit which is in the wilderness, and do not lay hands on him, that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers, that they, they stripped Joseph of his tunic, a coat of many colours was on him. Then they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat a meal, and they lifted their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels, bearing spices, balm and myrrh, on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brothers listened. <coughs> then Midianite traders passed by, so the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites with twenty shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the pit, and indeed Joseph was not in the pit, he tore his clothes, and he returned to his brothers and said, The lad is no more, and I, where shall I go? So they took Joseph's tunic, killed a kid of the goats, and dipped the tunic in the blood. Then they sent the tunic of many colours, and they brought it to their father and said, We have found this. Do you know whether it is your son's tunic or not? And he recognised it. It is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him, and I doubt Joseph is torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put on sack sackcloth on his waist, and mourned for many days. And all the sons and all the daughters arose to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted and said, For I shall go down into the grave to my son in mourning. Thus the father wept for him. Now the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and a captain of the guard. It's a long reading and a long story or part of a long story. But there's so much in it for us to learn in our everyday lives. Joseph was sold as a slave. He was disowned. He would lose his identity and his freedom. At this stage, Joseph is a bit of an enigma. The revelation of his personality is rolled out over a series of major events in his life. And over a period of time, we will look at those major events. But his brothers, however, were far more understandable. Jacob had deceived his father and had stolen his brother's birthright. He himself had been deceived by Laban into marrying Leah, who he didn't love. And it was only Joseph and Benjamin that came from Rachel, who Jacob did love. So right from the start, ten people were feeling inferior. If their mothers were not loved, what about them? You see, this whole story is about rejection. Rejection feeling by the ten brothers because of their father's behaviour. Joseph feeling rejected because of the brother's failure, um, rejection. And rejection is the only, um, one of the hardest things for us to bear. If someone that you know just doesn't happen to speak to you for some reason, you, you cringe inside, but what's wrong, what's happened? And I do deal with many people who have actually been rejected, rejected at birth in some cases. And it has an effect on their lives. And so from the start, these ten were feeling inferior because their mother wasn't loved. And so they didn't feel loved. 
And even Benjamin would, may have felt bad because Rachel actually died at his birth. And Joseph, therefore, was the only one that had a clear path to, to Jacob. And the brothers may even have been considering what, what about their inheritance. You know, Joseph had fiddled his own inheritance, as it were. He, he cheated his brother to get the inheritance that they had. What if he was going to do something similar with Joseph? Was he going to favour Joseph and find some way in which Joseph could have the inheritance that they believed that they were due to? And the problem is when in our lives we start to feel like this, when we start to feel rejected, when we start to feel put on one side, when we start to feel cheated. Our thinking starts to take the wrong path. We feel threatened. Threatened that we might lose something that we cherish or want. We panic. And we do foolish things. We demand change. We demand things to change so it goes in our direction. We worry. And we can get into a rage when what we want doesn't come. We can get depressed. But most of all, we can take unwise actions to try and achieve our goals. And so they, the brothers went through all these emotions right to the extent that they were prepared to kill their brother. The brother who clearly was favoured by the father, the coat was significant of that. The gown that people wore in those days indicated their position. And the fact that Joseph had a special coat was an indication that he was high in favour with his father. Then there were the dreams that came along. Dreams that indicated that they would be bowing down to him. And this is what would cause them to make the wrong actions. No way am I going to bow down to him. I would rather kill him than do that. But then again we can look at Joseph. We can look at him in so many ways. He was not so obvious as the brothers or his motives or his actions because he was the victim of their thoughts. Sometimes we read in, in the book that uh, in books that he boasted to his brothers, but when we read it in the Bible, that isn't so. He, he went and told them what he saw. Maybe that was unwise. Maybe he should have kept his counsel and kept it to himself rather than broadcast it to, to his brothers. To have kept it to himself and see what the future held. On the other hand, by we see in a moment that by declaring these things, it did in fact direct his future. A future that was going to be very, very significant. What's become clear in Genesis 39 9 was that he, he thought clearly God's way. The brothers, instead of killing him, the story tells us that they sold him into slavery. 
got him out of the way. And he was a slave to Potiphar. And Potiphar had a wife. A wife who wanted Joseph. She wanted a sexual relationship with him. And that's part of another story. But what I want to indicate here was that in this story was that Joseph thought in a godly way. Despite all that his brothers had done to him, despite the fact that he was now a slave, his focus was on God. The verse says, I cannot sin against God. There were many other things in which, you know, his priority could have, have been. It wasn't a case of, I cannot sin against Potiphar. It was, I cannot sin against God. And that, of course, would embrace Potiphar. And therefore, his thinking was order. In the, it, it, and this is the way that he dealt with his brother's actions. And no time was there any sign of animosity or revenge. And this becomes evident when we, when we get later down the story of Joseph. When we think in line with God, our thinking is wise. We don't go through that list that I spoke about earlier. We don't have the panic. We don't, we don't worry. We don't get into a rage when things don't go our way. We may go through a process of disappointment when a bad thing happens. Even righteous anger. But the root that uh, leads not to rage or depression, but to a productive sadness, which leads us to desire to learn and move forward with our experience. When things go wrong, that we think they're wrong, we can learn from them. We can move forward and have them to to be a help in our life, not a hindrance. And in Joseph's case, it was because of his godly thinking that he was used later in prison, then in Egypt. Eventually, he saved his brothers who became Israel, the people through whom God's covenant was to save the world. In other words, that downward trend that appeared for Joseph to take him from, um, from being a favoured son to a slave. That route was to be of great significance to the whole world and in fact to us today. And next time I'm going to talk about this, I'm going to talk about some of the actions of Joseph that affected the whole world and created Israel and that affect us even till today. But the important part of this in the story of Joseph was that despite what was done to him, his focus was on God and God eventually raised him up from the pit to a place of height, but a place of wisdom that will do so much for God's cause. The brothers, they had to live with what they'd done. And towards the end of the story, we will find out what happened to the brothers. 
But in the meantime, let's focus on focusing on God. No matter how rejected we are by people on this earth, we're not rejected by God when we keep our eyes on him. And God will carry us through the passage of life when we walk his way. Heavenly Father, we just want to come to you this morning. We want to walk with you. We want to recognise, Lord, your sovereignty, your holiness, your faithfulness. We want to recognise that because of that we sin on this earth, we sin against you. Help us, Lord, to be like Joseph and keep our eyes on you. We don't want to offend you. We want to show our love to you. And Lord, we may feel rejected. We may feel put aside. But Lord, you have a place for each of us. And Father, we just pray that we are able to recognise that and to live in that place. Amen.